Oh, sorry, I didn't see you guys there. It was just polishing off my 100K subscriber plaque. Hey, can you believe the last year of our lives is almost done? Does anybody have hope for 2021? I know I don't, but nonetheless, we got some cool products coming in the next year. I mean, in 2020, we saw the AirPods Max, the HomePod Mini, the whole iPhone 12 lineup, the new iPad Pro early on. What can we expect in the next 365 days from Apple? Uh, let's take a little bit of a, a glance into the future to see what products we can expect because there's some really cool stuff coming. Drop a like if you guys are excited, hit subscribe for more, and hey, let's go ahead and jump in. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. All right, so first I wanna start off with a few miscellaneous products that uh, we were actually supposed to see, well, two of the three we were supposed to see this year. Uh, let's start off with the Apple TV. Now, I know this is not a huge product, but next year's Apple TV has, uh, it has excited me a little bit. It's got my interest a bit spiked because rather than just being like a spec bump Apple TV, the exact same look and feel as before, apparently the new one is gonna have either an A12 or an A14 type processor inside, and it's gonna have more of a gaming focus. I mean, we have evidence of this with Apple Arcade, but the fact that this could actually be coming and, uh, and have also a new remote. The remote in the Apple TV has historically been horrible since they switched over to the new like black glossy design. Nobody likes it. I mean, I think there's a few people that like it, but I'm sorry you don't count. It seems like Apple's heard the feedback about the remote, so we will be getting a new one in 2021. The new remote's also gonna have Find My like in it, so if you lose the remote, you'll be able to like ping it or find it in the Find My app on your phone. Thank you. God. And we're long overdue for an Apple TV update on top of this. A lot of people don't know, but the last time we got a new Apple TV was 2017. That's the last time we've seen Apple update this product. So they've put a lot of work into it and the new Apple TV is absolutely coming next year. It's, it's been delayed time and time again, it has to launch. The second product that we've heard about time and time and time again, you could fill in the blank here if you're an Apple fan, AirTags. Apple's small tile-like tracking accessory that's gonna have augmented reality that's gonna connect to your phone probably via Bluetooth that looks exactly like this. Like we have the exact design leaked. We know the feature set. We know it's gonna be integrated inside of the Find My app. We know that there's gonna be balloons involved when you point your phone around the room to use augmented reality to find your lost stuff. The only thing we don't know is exactly when these are coming, but with support for these in iOS 14.3 that recently launched, like they've gotta be right around the corner. I mean, honestly, why hasn't Apple launched them? A lot of us have been speculating, well, these are good for when you lose things and you're moving around in the world a lot. A lot of us are just at home. So it probably wouldn't have done very well if it actually did launch before the end of the year of the pandemic. Hopefully when things calm down in 2021, that's when they launch. It Please, just please give us air attacks. But that's really all like the miscellaneous stuff. Now I wanna jump in to the big dogs, the big product lines and the things that I am significantly more excited about than anything else. Let's start off with iPhones. I know this is a big one. I know the iPhone 12 just came out, but believe it or not, there will be a new iPhone next year. Sorry, sport. I know your iPhone 12 is brand new and shiny, but it's gonna be rusty and decrepit in just under nine months. The lineup is not going to be at all what we saw like on the iPhone 12. It is not going to be this monumental jump, design upgrade, refresh, tons and tons of features. It's gonna be like more of an S year. We don't know if they're gonna call it the iPhone 12 S or the iPhone 13, but based on what they've been doing recently, they've kind of just been jumping the whole version number. The screen sizes are gonna be exactly identical as before, iPhone 13 mini 5.4 inches, iPhone 13 and 13 Pro 6.1 inches, and iPhone 13 Pro Daddy Max is gonna be at 6.7 inches again. All the models are probably gonna have a smaller notch, might bring some of the iPhone 12 Pro camera, like aperture and letting light in upgrades to all the models, and uh, we, we may actually see Touch ID come back. We just don't know on which models. I have a feeling it'll be for the pros. Touch ID reportedly going to be under the display with the iPhone 13s. And if you spend more money on the pros, you're gonna get a 120 Hertz OLED display. Uh, the only reason Apple skipped out on that in 2020 was due to battery life. And they might also have faster Wi-Fi as well, but it's so early on for these. Just 
you know what, I was kidding. Enjoy your iPhone 12 while well, it's out now because the iPhone 13s, I mean, I think if you got an iPhone 12, you made the right call. Like that's been the biggest upgrade in three years. The 13s are simply gonna build on top of what the iPhone 12 already created. Now there could also be a bonus iPhone as well, the iPhone SE Plus, but sources are really split right now on whether this is coming in the early part of the year or late in the year, or actually in 2021 at all. Some think it might not come out until 2022 at the earliest. This is just like a 5.5 inch iPhone iPhone 8 style version of the lowest cost iPhone. Apple's reportedly working on a big version, which makes sense. They did a, a revamped version of the iPhone 8. Now they're kind of working on a revamped version of the iPhone 8 Plus. Some rumors say it could be like edge to edge, sort of that all screen design, but I feel like Apple might keep this home button design around just a little bit longer because a lot of people do but they do like it. I don't I don't agree, but a lot of people do like the home button. Now following that, we uh what was I gonna say? Ah, it was it was iPad. It was iPad. What? Yeah, that is what I how did you know that? It's Craig, your buddy. I watch what you do all the time. You're telling me that when I'm not using a VPN, you can just like see what I'm up to and then sell me ads based on? Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, that no stuff? words like creepy around. Uh, I'm pretty sure what you've been looking at is a little creepy. Yeah, without NordVPN, advertisers and anybody else can track you around the internet to see what you're up to. That is so objectively creepy. And the deal they have going on is the best one I've ever seen in the three plus years I've been working with NordVPN. And they keep coming back because you guys love them so much. At nordvpn.com slash I update, you are getting four months free when you pick up the two years plan. It is such a good deal. They have the fastest servers that I have ever tried and I have not switched from them or gone with one of the million other VPN companies that contacts me because I believe in NordVPN and they haven't failed me yet. So go show them some love, nordvpn.com slash I update. Now moving on to iPads, I've, uh, I've fallen more in love with my iPad Pro in 2020 than I ever thought I would. Like the 120 hertz screen is just gorgeous. The Apple Pencil support with low latency is phenomenal. iPad OS continues to get better every single release release the smart keyboard. What can we expect from the iPad Pro next? Well, we're hearing 5G. 5G is coming. I don't care about that, but what I do care about is a faster processor. No, I'm just kidding. I, I actually care about the upgraded screen technology, which is apparently going to be mini LED. It mirrors a lot of the benefits of OLED, but I believe it's lower cost, more power efficient, gets very, very bright when compared to LCD. Basically the screen on the iPad Pros is gonna go from like already industry leading I don't, I don't know, to industry dominating, to, to even better. Like Apple has been working on this mini LED screen technology for years and it seems they finally got it ready. And of course it makes sense to put it in a pro device before they put it in anything else. But no need to worry. We've got some other iPad models. If you don't want to spend 800 plus dollars coming in 2021 as well, the most radical of these, a new version of the iPad mini, the iPad mini six. Now, while I've never been an iPad mini guy myself, a lot of people really love it. My mom loves her iPad mini, and it's clear that Apple has plans to keep this around for at least a little bit longer. And this time, they're not just putting a new processor inside. They're not just putting face ID on this device. They're actually upgrading the screen size pretty radically. It's going from 7.9 inches where it's at now to eight and a half or nine inches, somewhere in that eight and a half to, to nine inch range. So the screen on the mini is actually getting maxed. I know it's kind of odd, but I'm fully in favor of this. Like with the iPhone 12 Pro Max being 6.7 inches, that's not that far away from the iPad mini. So I think Apple needs to push it up just a little bit to, to make it feel like it's getting an upgrade. Plus, I, I think this suggests it's gonna get a new design because there's no way a nine inch screen can fit inside of the current body. So iPad mini, it's gonna be the biggest update in years. And then rounding things out, we're hearing about a new version of the lowest cost iPad, like the iPad, I think will be on the iPad nine. It'll have like an A13 processor, some nice storage options, decent RAM. And it's basically gonna take the design of the old iPad Air, the iPad Air 3 that came out in 2019, that's got like the slimmer bezels. Hopefully this device will finally get a laminated display. Does anybody else out there just simply avoid this lowest cost iPad because the display looks so significantly worse than everything else? I know that's me. And then we haven't really heard anything about the iPad Air. Uh, unclear if that will get an upgrade, like the new one that's out currently, the multicolor one, but I would assume that there could be one in the works. It's just, we haven't heard anything. My jimmies though have not been thoroughly rustled from these rumors. A lot of these sound exciting, but if there is one thing, and I'm not playing around about this, that I am legitimately more excited for 
in 2021 than I think I have ever been excited for an Apple product in my life. It is the new 24 and 32 inch iMac models. Here's the cheese on these guys. They are supposed to have Apple Silicon inside. We're speculating either an M2 chip or a variant like the M1X or M1Z. They are going to be significantly slimmed down in every way. The bezels are getting smaller. The design language is going to become more like the iPad Pro. And most importantly, the screen are getting bigger in the same or similar body. So it's just gonna be like these, but modernized. Like, I, I think we've been starved from a new iMac design for so long. Like, I was in grade school, I think, when this style iMac got unveiled. I'm legitimately not joking. Uh, and now I have a college degree. This is my favorite version or interpolation of what the Mac can be. It's the thing I use every single day. And if Apple upgrades the screen sizes to be like the Pro Display XDR with those thin bezels, and then they put their own silicon inside, I just genuinely don't think there's any limit to what you'll be able to do with these. I am so stoked. But it's not just the iMac getting upgraded next year. It's also redesigned versions of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. You might say, wait, I thought it was a 13 inch MacBook Pro. And you're exactly right. Apple's upgrading the screen on those by slimming down the bezels and basically applying the same strategy here. We don't know as many details about what direction this design is gonna go, but I mean, they brought the iPad Pro design from the iPad to the phone. I think we could very easily see that be applied to the Mac and even the MacBook. Pro line. So 14, 16 inch MacBook Pros are coming, also gonna have some variant of the M1 chip inside, but I assume it's gonna be significantly faster. I don't see Apple putting the base chip in these new Macs. The MacBooks may also be getting the radically upgraded mini LED screen tech, which is absolutely wild. I cannot believe that that's coming. That is going to revolutionize the way that screens run on the Mac. We've not seen anything but LCD in my entire life on those. So that is an absolutely substantial upgrade. It's gonna be a good year for the Mac. Plus, uh, Mark Gurman, the source of these rumors, suggests that a half-size Mac Pro could debut as soon as next year because Apple Silicon is proving to be a little bit faster than we thought. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Apple Silicon. Everybody seems to be a huge fan, and I just can't wait to see what happens with the next chips. Like, 2021 is going to be the year of the Mac. Now that we're kind of into this video, you might have been looking at your watch and say, well, hey, when is the, when is the watch gonna be upgraded? When do I get my new Apple Watch Series 7? Well, Apple is of course working on another one of these. They have chosen uh, convincingly that they will update the watch every single year, even if the watch isn't that big of an upgrade. Like the Series 6 and the Series 5, really small updates. In 2021, we're hearing at two key things for the Apple Watch. One, that it will see a shift in the design. This is according to Minchiko. And two, according to the verifier, I actually broke this story a few months back, that Touch ID is in the works. Uh, we're hearing it's going to either be under the display, like the iPhone 13, or I think more likely inside of the digital crown. It just feels so much more natural to rest your finger there than to touch like this. And I think Apple's teams will discover that in testing. So Touch ID coming, maybe a new design, but we don't know to what extent. Some people have been speculating that the edges could be more flat uh, and more defined, just like Apple's other products, but that's really just concept artists having fun. I don't know what else they're going to be working on though. I assume it's going to be upgraded health sensors of some kind, you know, maybe a new version of the blood oxygen monitoring or something. But I mean, it just seems like it's gonna be kind of a, a, a more small update, a, a more maybe meaningful, but small feature update like they've done over the past couple of years. My question is, how are they gonna update the Apple Watch SE? Apple just dropped that this year. Will that be updated in parity with the new watch series every year? Or will that sort of be its own line? Like, you know, the original iPhone SE came out in 2016 and it took until 2020 until we saw a new update. I don't exactly know. So maybe a SE Series 2 is coming, but honestly, I have a feeling that the SE that they announced this year will be the one that sticks around for a few years. Very close up to where those new Macs are, though, are what I'm looking forward to in the next versions of AirPods. And I mean, I use these all the time. I went for a run the other day in them. They're just fantastic. Even the AirPods Max, I didn't like them that much at first, yet every single time I listen to AirPods Max, they grow on me immensely. Apple just struck and continues to strike the right chord with AirPods. And while they are pricey, for me, they're worth it. I think for a lot of people, they're worth it, which is why we're expecting AirPods 3 and AirPods Pro 2 
uh, AirPods 3 in the earlier part of 2021 and AirPods Pro 2 in the later half of 2021. AirPods 3 are going to have a new design that reportedly looks like this according to 21 Audio who successfully leaked the design of AirPods Pro quite some time ahead of their unveil. They're sort of gonna be a hybrid between the AirPods 2 one size fits all and the AirPods Pro in-ear design. But the good news is I don't think these will actually be in-ear, they're just gonna be sort of like in-ear. We're hearing that they will have an H1 chip inside again, uh, unfortunately, so it doesn't seem like we'll be getting a big processing upgrade on these. However, they are going to have a new health sensor, like potentially able to take your heart rate through your ear which is pretty cool. Like you can obviously get your heart rate on an Apple Watch, but if you're just somebody with an iPhone and AirPods, you'll be able to take your heart rate that way. We really don't know that much about AirPods 3 though. I mean, maybe they'll be water resistant. That's something that I'm speculating, but we know they will not have noise cancellation. That is a feature Apple is marketing as a pro thing that pro people want, so don't expect noise cancellation on these. I just also think they won't have the design to support it, and they may cost $199 again. So the price for the base base variant could go up from $159 to 199 and I have a feeling they'll make the wireless charging case standard. These I am really excited to see because usually the rumors miss a few of the key features and I can't wait to see what the next base version of AirPods look like. I mean, if there's one product that has been uh, the most remarkable in my life over the past few years, I gotta give it to AirPods. Yeah, if you're looking for something a little bit premium, uh, more premium, I should say, on top of the already high AirTags, AirTags, AirTags price tag, you're looking at AirPods Pro 2. The things we've heard about these are wild. Mark Gerben says they'll look more similar to like Galaxy Buds or like Amazon's Echo Buds, which is a very radical design shift if you know what AirPods Pro look like right now. But the good news here is that we will see an upgraded wireless chip, so there should be some new processing functionality on AirPods Pro 2. It just might not come down to AirPods 3. And then I, uh, this isn't confirmed by anybody by the way, it's just my own little, my little tidbit speculation, I don't know what you want to call it, but I think we could see a new version of AirPods Max that are made of cheaper materials. Like, I love AirPods Max, they're just kind of heavy being made of uh, metal and aluminum right now. If Apple could replace those with like a Polyam 3 or whatever the, the squishy like soft touch vibe is on the outer pads and make them more plasticky, I don't ever call for plastic on a product, but when there are headphones that sit on your head, they get a little bit heavy and like you can't work out at all in AirPods Max. Like it'll be flopping all over the place. You just feel weighed down. So potentially we see AirPods Max Sport. We know Apple was working on them for sure. We just don't know if they're ever actually gonna release, but I would love to see these next year. When can you expect some of these products? I know that I, I have sort of been touching on release dates, but I wanna do something more standardized. I would say that in March or April, expect new AirPods, so AirPods 3, and a new version of the iPad Pro, and maybe even the 24 inch redesigned iMac, potentially redesigned MacBook Pro 14, 16 inch as well. I don't think we'll see anything in June or July. We could though. And then in the fall, which is Apple's heaviest release schedule for new products, that's when you expect all the new iPhone 13s, Apple Watch Series 7, maybe Apple Watch SE 2. I would also say to expect the larger 32 inch version of the iMac here. I I could see them upgrading those iMacs at different times. If the new MacBooks haven't come out in the spring, I would say expect them in the fall. And then the Apple TV and AirTags, I mean, my gut says in the spring, but they could also be pushed to June or July in the middle of the year, or even later in August, September, October, November. So we've got a pretty spread out year for releases, but of course, you know, the most fun is always in the second six months. We generally don't see that much in the first six months of the year, but hey, I mean, COVID kind of changed everything. So maybe it'll change that and we'll see the effects of that in 2021. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more and uh, can't, wait to, can't wait to talk about this more in 2021. Love you guys. Peace out. I'll see you in my next one.